Justin Rasmussen. Hell yes, okay, cool. We love tracking you. Good. So actually, it's being predicted, but it's also available to deliver to the organization. Not necessarily a 40 work week, but an understanding of the. So, what do we do? Well, I, I like this. This ties very close to to uh, a, a, a quote in, um, that goes in and and will help us fulfill things because it's really about acting. It's making things happen. That is the role of the analyst, changing our own perce perception of what our role is, and it, that is to changing it to enable people to make decisions. So we fail if we don't make them act. And it's really about delivering on the promise because could we do this? Could we go in and could we do diagnosis? Could we do predictive? Could we do prescriptive? And the answer is yes, of course we could. If, we, if somebody told us it was important enough. But we kind of been spun into a storytelling that is, tell me what happened yesterday. And the problem with yesterday is that management makes decision about what? Tomorrow. They make decisions about the future, so they're much more interested in us telling them what, what's in the future, what is the impact of this if we don't do it, what is the consequences, what is it if we look forward, instead of looking backwards, right? So having that spin on things, saying we can deliver on this if you can allow us the focus and the resources. And for me, the people who have seen my presentation know, um, yeah, the IHM student is going to say, I've seen this shit before. Uh, well, the ones who had me. Uh, I love this because it gives me a, a focus in relation to activities. Because why are we doing analytics? We're doing analytics to, because the company wants to change the future. So the future funnel is basically, if you look at the middle column the, with the blue dot, it says... If I today don't do nothing, where will I most likely end up? I will most likely end up in the, in the blue dot. And if the blue dot is okay, then you don't need analytics because then you don't have to do anything. Right? If I don't do anything, this is where I'll end up. But for most companies, they will have, they will have a, like the, the green dot. They have a preferred place they want to end up. They want to increase sales. They want to have more customers. They want to decrease cost. So... Analytics can help us once the target has been set to navigate toward that target. But the problem is, how, why can't we do this? Why, why do we, as analytics, have problem with this? Because we have too much data. And we really need to go in and reverse our thinking and saying, we don't really need all the data that we have today. We, we, we need to recalibrate around something else, and that is... What decisions are people trying to make? What are the decisions that we are supporting with analytics? So instead of looking at how much data we can get, with GDPR and everything going on, it's really reversing the thinking and saying, how little do we need? It's how little data does it require to make these decisions? How little data do I actually need to be able to push this forward? And I mentioned that this is about the data that loses value over time. So the faster we can make the decision, over here, the faster we can make the decision, the more business value the decision will, will have because we will act on it at once. But going down the line, trying to analyze, trying to do stuff, then we lose value every single day. Now, if I say marketing data is something that is the campaign tracking is the most valuable part of your organization or your analytics data. This is why you have analytics. In your organizations, who is responsible for marketing data? Is there somebody saying, this is the most important part of our analytics data set, is the marketing data. Who is responsible for that? Where does the buck stop? Yeah. But, but in most organizations, they will say, Steam, come on, don't be silly. It's analytics. We're all responsible. 
And the golden rule of if everybody's responsible, then who's responsible? Nobody. Right? Because then it's not my problem. It is hadn't, if this hasn't been identified as my specific problem, then it's absolutely not my specific problem. So having ownership of this data in the organization, including something we don't normally see in analytics, a mandate and a budget. So it's not just about the being slapped around because the data isn't in order. It's also about being able to slap other people around and make sure that the data get in order because... Why isn't the data in order? Has anybody tried to put, m m convince a third-party uh, third provider to put in campaign codes on their campaigns? It's not easy. And they will forget it and will not get prioritized. They will just get thrown out and say, yeah, next time, until somebody comes and asks you how the campaign performed. Now, in a lot of ways, right now is a crunch time for a lot of organizations. It's a crunch time for a lot of organizations because we have shifted from universal analytics to GA4. And that doesn't mean we have... Well, it means that a lot of companies have shifted away from universal analytics to something else whereof some of that is GA4. But there has been a lot of shifts. And what is the problem with a shift? The problem with a shift is we cannot point back to anybody behind us. So if there's a problem... I'm the last guy in line because I set this up, right? So we, we, are running, we have run out of excuses right now to actually get our analytics in order because we can point to nobody else who fucked this up, right? So this is kind of saying the responsibility lies with you now in relation to saying I have to accept this because sure, I might be able to point to my agency, but I briefed them. So still me. Right? So, so this is kind of a reflection going in and saying, okay, it's your responsibility. And that's why we need to reverse our thinking. Uh, and reverse our thinking in relation to instead of focusing on the data and the tracking, then focusing on the conversation with the stakeholders. Because at the end of the day, they are the people we serve. We serve them because they are making decisions. And we need to enable them to make decisions. So as long as we provide them the data that they need to make decisions, then we're safe and then we're doing an amazing job because then we're providing value for the company. So, what about this? Did you start with Hempstein? Well, yeah, right? So, the story is that Gan Ying was actually... Uh, traveling to Rome because he was been, had been sent by a Chinese general saying he had heard there was a country called Rome that was amazing somewhere in the Mediterranean. Uh, they had never been there. There hadn't, hadn't been anybody traveling the full distance between China and Rome. So he was the first person to try to do the, the journey. And his order was to establish trade relations with Rome in 97 AD. So why did the people at the edge of the Mediterranean tell him that it would take between three months and three years to get there? Exactly. They were Arabian traders. They owned the middle of the route. For them, the worst thing that could happen was that China and Rome started trading directly because they, that would basically be cutting out the middleman. So he decided, based on the worst possible source of data, to cancel something. And th this is just the thought saying, formal trade relations between Europe and China wasn't established until the Portuguese built a port in China. What year? 1567. Right? Sure, there was the Silk Route. There was very few people who traveled it. The first person to tell the, the Europeans about China was Marco Polo in 11-something. Right? But there was no relations and no contact until the Portuguese set up this base. So what world would we have been living in today if he had been more focused on the decision he was making in relation to moving forward? If he had been more critical and said how would the world have looked if Rome and China had trade relations from 100 AD? 
I think it's interesting because it kind of shows the consequences, the extreme consequences of decisions. So one Chinaman decided to change, change, turn around, and he basically changed the world we live in today. The point here is saying that we need to flip our thinking. We need to flip our thinking, and it is called uh, Koenig's kickback modifier because I stole this slide from Nikola. So kudos, Nikola. So not necessarily in this variation. Well, actually in this variation, I think. Yeah. So, so that we need to put the decision first because by focusing on the decisions that people are making, then the data becomes valuable at once. It's not the other round that way around that we gather a lot of data that might be valuable one day. It means that we gather a lot less data that is valuable now. And that gives you five things to, to do. I'm not going to read them out loud. You, I'm pretty sure you can. Well, I can read the titles. Think business first, not departments. This is not about anything but business. We are hired as analysts to improve the business. Simplify our own business. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be focused. You have to create some thoughts in relation to this. And then have targets. Going back to the future funnel, if we don't have targets to work with, this is probably one of the biggest problems with most analytics platform in general. Where the hell do you enter the target? Right? They don't have it. Right? Because it's like, yeah, you, we just give you the numbers. We don't give you what you're aiming at. So, so it's, we don't give you something you're trying to achieve. We're just giving you shitloads of numbers. And that was it. I think I spoke more, a little more than I was supposed to, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thank you.